Welcome to Write Daily. My name is Nick. And today we're going to be doing one word, which is what we do Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. So let's go ahead and open up a web browser. I'm going to use Google Chrome and open up oneword.com. Now, if you want to write with me, I'll let you open up this web browser, give you a couple of seconds. I'm going to do oneword.com. We're going to click this little go button. It's going to take us to the next page and we have 60 seconds to write about what's on the top of the screen. So let's go quiet for a moment, write for 60 seconds and then discuss what we've written. So that's time up for me. Um, I hope you got more than I did. Today wasn't really something that flowed. Kind of had a little bit of trouble getting started. But as you can see here, time's up. Finish your last sentence and, and click the button to submit. So we're going to do that. We're going to finish up here and then we're going to go over what we've written. So that's it for me, but I'm going to fill out my name here. Eh, not full name. Eh, not last name either. We're going to link back to nothing today until I figure out what I want to link to this. If I want it to be my kind of personal Twitter or my YouTube, we'll, we'll, we'll do the YouTube. I don't know if I actually have a channel name on this channel because they've changed how YouTube works. So we're not going to put anything there. But today's topic or today's word is steak. And this didn't really bring anything to mind for me. It just kind of is it's steak. But regardless, she looked down at her plate there, amidst a pile of mashed potatoes and cold gravy, a boilerplate assortment of vegetables that lay limp, was a big, huge, ridiculously sized piece of meat. There is no way for somebody of her stature to even think about starting this thing. She picked up a fork, picked up a knife, and hesitated. And I kind of chose the word show uh, the word choice at the the end there, the hesitation, because that's how. I felt about this whole thing. I didn't know how to really end this sentence. I didn't really know how to start writing this. But I kind of thought if somebody was focusing on a steak, it might be because it was out of place. So instead of using amongst, I used amidst. It was kind of one of my favorite words. And I thought of what the most generic kind of steak could be. And that would be served with hearty helping of potatoes and vegetables that sometimes when you're a kid or an appetite or a meal isn't so appealing is kind of, it's kind of the worst thing that you could see, which might be, hey, mashed potatoes are easy. They might've come out of a box and the gravy's cold. It's 
wasn't really timed very well. The steak was obviously the most important thing on the plate, and that's why it's so big. Regardless, one word in doing these exercises is about expanding how fast we can have ideas come to our heads, about thinking of how we can reach for diction very clearly and distinctly in a relatively short manner of time being 60 seconds. It's pretty crazy, but we're going to submit website isn't necessary as you can see. And when the next site loads, we'll take a look at some other ones. Oh, wow. Somebody needed a really, really long one and that's all in a minute. So let's look at some of these. And let's pick a good one before we go into the big one, because I really want to read the big one. Oh, some of these people wrote poems, which is awesome. My heart is beating. Beaten. B. The wooden claims of my serenity, my sanity, sleep. So I'm guessing they mistook steak to be like a wooden steak, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> The wooden claims of my serenity, my sanity, I would think is vampires in a coffin and they might be getting staked by Buffy. Here's another one by Belinda Ra uh, Rody. Roddy. We ordered steak and filled our bellies with warm beef and peppercorn sauce, setting our souls against the edge of our seats and wiping our mouths with the tablecloth, much to the chagrin of the restaurant's owners. We ordered beer by the barrel, savoring each carbonated mouthful, and washed it down all with more beer. Then we stepped outside to light cigars, ignoring the wrinkled noses of the disdainful as they passed us, savoring the sweetness of premature death. Does this person have a website? Because I'm checking that out later. <laughs> that was really awesome. <sighs> by Joe, the moment you enter the apartment, you could smell it the overpowering scent of meat cooking. It sent your mouth watering for a taste of that steak sizzling on the grill. And even though this isn't the most well-written, there's some spelling errors. Apartment, scent, sizzling. It is something of a sense memory. This is like you walk into your friend's place and you can really get this kind of feel of what's going on because we've all had the moment of you're invited over to somebody's house for a barbecue or you know just a meal and when you walk into the door you can smell something delicious cooking it's relatable and that's something that always needs to be in writing is relatability from bridget grace who also has oh she's a member so she's logged in and you can read some of her other stuff if you click on her name she watched him devour piece after piece of the slab of meat in front of him, without regard for conversation or the room around him. She moved to pee anxiously around her plate, glancing around the quiet ambience of the table. Cloths. Okay. She moved to pee anxiously around her plate, glancing around the quiet ambience of the tablecloths and beautiful people. She wanted to leave so badly. I like that. It really gets across the point of being uncomfortable and which is kind of hit on the head with the she wanted to leave so badly at the end and the really um, uncomfortable moving a pee around on the plate she feels out of place she's with somebody that maybe isn't doesn't have the best table manners or bedside manner or i don't know why i said bedside manner but table manners and the last one before we kind of wrap it up, I want to read this really big one by Ruby Luby. Sitting there waiting for the waiter to bring me the first steak I've ever had. How lucky am I? A long time ago when we had them for some money, the old man called up Freddy the Butcher and told him he wanted a filet mignon, the best cut he had, along with two pounds of chopped meat. I brought it home and watched the old man make the steak like a pro who'd been doing it his all his life. It smelled so good, I could feel the spit welling up in my mouth. I sat there and watched him eat it, 
me at the table in a chair and the dog there on the floor looking up with a different kind of begging look than mine. Well, it was clear that the damn dog had a lot more experience at this sort of thing than I did. I mean, who could win that fight? Shifting her weight from side to side to make sure the old man knew she was sitting there, catching his eye once or twice, staring him straight in the eye with a look that could melt rock. Me? All I could do was sit in the chair and stare at that piece of meat. And when we had about two or three bites left, he gave one of them to the dog. She didn't even chew it really, just swallowed it whole and looked up for another one. He didn't give it to her. When he was done, he wheeled away from the table and told me that we'd better get, he'd better get the hamburgers going. The boys would be home soon and they'd be hungry. The dog sniffed the floor one more time and turned and left. And I wondered, she was thinking, fuck him, the way I was. Okay, the, I read the last line wrong. And I wondered, was she thinking, fuck him, the way I was? That's a weird, weird passage. I wonder if it's part of like some kind of characterization they're working on for a book or something. But I, I wanted to build up to this one, but I feel like I kind of sold myself short because as long as it is and as dense as it is, it's dense. It's kind of hard to understand. Um, so to summarize it, somebody buys meat for an old man from a butcher, a filet mignon, and then two pounds of chopped meat, which they're going to be making into hamburgers later. And then our protagonist in this situation just kind of watches the other character eat it, along with the dog in the room. And it just kind of... I don't know, it doesn't haphazardly really introduce any sense of hunger, but just wanting. And I feel like it's uh, it, it sold me short. I sold myself short on this because I, I really thought it was going to be more than it was. And I'm kind of sad about that. <laughs> but mine is at the bottom since it's the newest one. And we'll read it again just to go over it one more time, just in comparison with all these other ones. She looked down at her plate. There, amidst a pile of mashed potatoes and cold gravy, a boilerplate assortment of vegetables that lay limp was a big, huge, ridiculously sized piece of meat. There was no way for somebody of her stature to even thinking about starting this thing. She picked up a fork, picked up a knife, and hesitated. I had a lot of fun reading these. And there's only 10 entries for today. Hey, maybe you can get in there and you can make an entry and who knows? It could go from 10 to 12 to 15, 20, 100. And I'd like to see that. And if you want to submit to me in the YouTube comments, I think that would be awesome. And I would have replied to like every single one I got because that would be awesome. The whole point of me doing Write Daily as a YouTube channel and as a page and going forward is to help foster writing in other people and i want to meet more people who want to write and who want to get um, to a point where they want to publish and share things with everyone around them because it took me a long time to get to the point where i am where i want to share writing with other people and i would love to find other people that are of a similar mindset so until next time have a good day